Hello, this is Doug Brunke of the Global Chamber, and today I'm with Fabienne Berteau, Managing Partner of Vendome Partners International. Welcome, Fabienne. Thank you, Doug. Today we're talking about cross-cultural capabilities and mindset, particularly bringing on candidates to companies that are global and make sure that there's a good fit, and for candidates who are interested in working for global companies, make sure that they're being fit in the right location. So Fabienne, really appreciate your time and your expertise. Uh, have a question for you. you know, how do you know whether a candidate will be able to handle cross-cultural business? Are there certain indicators that you use to, to say whether this person can or cannot do it? Well, yes, it is part of the pre-screening process when we shortlist our candidates before we present them to, to the client. And, uh, you know, one major um, uh, way to do it is by, you know, having a team of multicultural recruiters who will be able to relate and uh, assess, you know, in the specific language that the candidate is from or, uh, you know, the specific culture they're from, uh, assess their skills. So I think having a multilingual, multicultural team of recruiters helps um, really paint a, a good picture when it comes to the, the candidate's ability uh, to uh, to adapt and perform in a global uh, in a global position, um, but you know, a lot of the questions that we ask the candidates are behavioral types, and uh, this means that we are going to put them in situations situations that you know the client is expecting from the candidate, uh, how they would handle a specific situation. More importantly, how did did they handle it in the past? I mean, most likely. Candidates, you know, will come from a similar background, and they've already done uh, uh, some of the, you know, the responsibilities and duties that's expecting of them, um, that expected of them. So, um, you know, uh, we're going to uh, see how they handled it in the past, and the the best way to do that is to obviously hear it from the candidate, but also talk to references and people that have worked with that person, whether it's upper management or staff that reported to that person, you know, so that we can really get a good sense of how the candidate communicates, how they um, uh, adapt, and how they react to different situations based on, you know, a consensus view from the people they worked with in the past. So given all that, it, I mean, it's certainly a, uh, it's a process that you're recommending that is uh, uh, rigorous. Um, and is cross-cultural, um, which is great. Uh, however, from your experience, you've probably seen a time or two that even with some good processes, the wrong person was, was picked. You know, what can we learn from those circumstances? Well, I mean, sometimes, um, you know, it could be attributed to also, you know, the company not having really uh, defined the responsibilities and the goals very well to the candidate, and there was a, maybe a gap between what was expected and, and uh, what actually happened. Um, but, you know, yes, sometimes also, you know, on the candidate side, I mean, you will have uh, examples where, um, you know, the culture fit is not what they expected. And again, I think a good way to remedy this is by having as many people from the client, the company, involved in the recruiting process. So the candidate, you know, can know before they make the decision to join the company, they'll know the team. They'll have talked to, you know, their direct reports and their supervisors, and they'll really have a good sense of um, who they'll be working with on a daily basis. I think too, too many times companies tend to make a decision by just, you know, interviewing or having very few people interview the candidate and not really put the candidate in a situation of, you know, their future um, uh, job environment. And uh, I think, you know, candidates, especially, you know, in a global environment, they need to really get a good sense of, okay, you know, who are the uh, different team members I'm going to work with? You know, how am I going to be able to communicate effectively, especially when it's different culture involved? You know, they need to have a lot of information uh, given to them before they can make that jump and that decision. Are there additional factors involved when we think about an expat type of assignment? Are there additional factors involved when you're looking or a company is looking to place someone in an expat situation where they're actually maybe with their family living in a foreign country mm -hmm. and doing that foreign job? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, obviously, um, you know, the relocation um, assistance is a big question that comes up uh, when somebody needs to move even, you know, across states, but especially from a different country. Uh, so we need to make sure that the relocation and the assistance is in place. 
um, most of the time, um, you know, uh, a, a question of a work visa, you know, might come up. And this is obviously uh, a big hurdle. And, um, you know, um, uh, it is important to know that for very specific types of responsibilities and, and, and positions, it is not an issue. But for the big majority of positions out there, it is. And companies will naturally gravitate toward, you know, people who already have the necessary, you know, paperwork and job visas, um, you know, to be able to join the company as opposed to going through the process of sponsoring a candidate. So this can be um, an issue. And, uh, you know, this is something that global candidates will face at some point. So these are somewhat personal questions to some extent, right? Because with expat assignments, very often they fail because of a family issue. Right. And so just like in any international position, that can happen, right? There can right. be some family situation, health issues and whatever. You know, does a company have a right to ask and, and to probe around what the family situation is for a candidate? And how do you guide typically mm -hmm. uh, people on that, both from the company's standpoint of how right. to understand it and then from a candidate perspective that perhaps maybe has some issues and right. you know they may even be worrying about disclosing or not disclosing those? Sure. I think it's also a question of culture. I think some um, in Europe, you know, when we work with European uh, companies, they tend to be a lot more um, you know, direct in terms of making sure that the family situation is okay. In the U.S., it's a little taboo. Um, so I think it, the companies rely on the, on companies like Vendome Partners, where you know this is the groundwork that we do. And you know, before we present a short list of candidates, we want to make sure that we understand you know the intimate situation of the candidate. And frankly, you know, they are usually a little more open uh, discussing and sharing you know this inf this information with uh, with us. Um, you know, because um, the company, the, the, the client and the company does not have to know all the details. But, you know, when we present a candidate and we assure them that, you know, everything is in place, they're ready to go, um, you know, we know the facts. The companies don't know to, you know, don't need to know all the details. But this is part of our, you know, pre-screening process and making sure that we only present a short list of candidates that are willing and able, you know, to take the position. Great, great, uh, great thought there. Undoubtedly, uh, the whole process that you've talked about here for cross-border is just so critically important. What, in, in conclusion, what advice do you have for, for companies? Well, I mean, you know, it might sound a little self-serving, but I think companies, um, if they don't have a, um, a very disciplined and uh, uniform interview process when it comes to global hiring, they really need to rely on companies um, you know, on, on executive search companies that have the capability and the team to assess these candidates. And having a multilingual, multicultural team of recruiters that are, you know, that is able to really drill down, um, you know, the details and the pointed questions with candidates, you know, in their own language, as far as, you know, their capacity to take the job and, you know, the ability to move to a different country and assess their skills to adapt is critical for companies. And, uh, you know, as the global economy obviously um, uh, is more and more important, I mean, it, it is critical for companies to have that capacity in place because they will need global managers and um, to be able to assess uh, and objectively um, pick the right person, you know, is critical for the success of uh, a company's uh, growth and, you know, uh, global success. Fabien Berto, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.